But uh, hey, if you guys remember uh, just a video yesterday uh, with William and that female uh, Sarah Beth outside Walmart and she was eating a salad with the puppy. Uh, it's funny, she saw the video and uh, William told her about it and she uh, sent me a text because we had exchanged numbers during the premiere, uh, the second premiere a couple months back, well about six weeks ago, five weeks, five or six weeks, something like that. Anyway, she called and we're going to meet up uh, down at Providence. Uh, she's got to talk to me about something. But uh, Alright man, uh, next time I come on you'll probably see Heather. So let's make it happen. Plus I got some lunches, just in case. Okay. Hey, why don't you, you want to just sit in the car with keep an eye on your stuff, on your bike and stuff? Uh, I'm not a crazy guy. Oh, it's not you that I worry about with my bike. <laughs> oh, no, we're not going nowhere. It'll be right here. You'll keep your eye on it the whole time. A year ago, well, almost a year ago, my husband was arrested on a whole bunch of felony charges. Yeah, and he was wait, he was awaiting trial. Yes. Yeah, for well, the longest. He was, yeah, you told okay, me. Okay, so. Mm, that sucks. He was found guilty, but here's the thing. Um, I wrote a letter on July 25th to, the de to my husband's first attorney, to Matthew Azahara, and, or Azahara, and uh, he forwarded that letter to the DA. The DA dismissed it, said, I don't believe that. But all the police body cam footage states and shows from all the people that was up there at the camp that my husband was not there, that he packed up his stuff and had left earlier that day and had not been seen or heard from all day long, or all night. He was not there, period. Okay, I was high on methamphetamines, you know, I've been sober seven months now, and... You're talking about I, at the time of the incident? Yes. Okay. And I, it, I'd been up for a couple of weeks and I was hallucinating, you know, and meth can make you do that. It can make you see things, hear things, and cause yourself harm, others harm, because you're not in the right state of mind and you actually see and believe. Wow. That's got to be so horrible. So now my husband, the jury found my husband guilty. Not to, let me go back a little bit. My husband's new attorney filed a motion of discovery and... On the body cam stuff? On any evidence. And All of it. the DA did not relinquish that letter as part of the evidence. The and letter the letter that you had... Wrote to the DA. Okay. So that is basically missing. Yeah, it was never filed. I found it in my emails, in the emails where it was forwarded, and the the email that was forwarded back to Matthew Eisenhower from the DA. Okay. And I forwarded it to my husband's new attorney. Oh. But you know, because, well, the one that represented him in trial. Not to mention the fact that Judge Cindy Morris forced me to testify against my legal husband, and I did not want to. That's grounds for dismissal right there. My I think. I would it, think. It is. You know. And so my husband's attorney filed for a mistrial based on, you know, evidence. And Cindy Morris denied it. Mm -hmm. Not to mention it's a conflict of interest with Cindy Morris because she is a, she's one of the big people, uh, advocates and stuff uh, against uh, domestic violence. So that puts a, a conflict of interest. So she's yeah. automatically going to know him. Yeah. I, 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 tell you, I know what you're saying there. I need help getting it out there. My story out there. I need people to listen. I can't find an attorney. My husband's fixing to go away. The, he's like he hasn't been uh what's it called uh given a verdict he's been given a verdict but he hasn't been sentenced yet and he he still got three more charges to go when he, on trial over on the ninth of this month and that's the day he'll be given the verdict for what the jury found him guilty of but my husband's attorney before the day before the jury came back with the verdict the end of the trial my husband's attorney filed for a mistrial and Cindy Morris denied it. How can the DA sit there and tell me what, who did I, anything to me? I don't know how, and how do they force you to testify when you, you know, you, if you're married, you, you're, you, I don't see how it you ever clean, even You claim the, the fit. Yeah, exactly. I need people to hear my story. Okay. 
Well, that's what I need your help with. I, yeah. You, you have a good YouTube, you know, channel. People listen. I need yeah. you to help me get my story out there. Well, you're telling it. Like, right there's now. a whole lot that goes into it, yeah. and like my, my rights, my human rights, my civil rights, my constitutional rights, my husband's too have all been violated and taken from us. So, the and no one will hear us. And then, you know, you got the DA. That's that's he's abusing his power. And trying to make a name for herself because he's a new DA. Right. Cindy Morris, that's abusing her power. And Officer Cesar, mm -hmm. who, you know, didn't take the time to actually find out all the facts. So the first attorney totally botched things up. And yeah. now you have a yeah. second attorney. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. Re oh, and to mention this, the first attorney. Okay, so with a new judge that's in office or that's in Superior Courts here in Whitfield County. Judge Burke Poston, he was still signing indictments, including my husband's, after he was officially sworn in as the Superior Court Judge of Whitfield County. What was, okay. his, what was his previous position? The DA. Oh. Okay. To cover it up, they send out paperwork dropping charges to where the new DA, who was not officially sworn in at the time that he signed the indictments, signed the indictments. And my husband's attorney, Matthew Aza Howard, the first attorney, did not tell my husband that he had the right and didn't file the paperwork for my husband, to, for the DA not to be able to put the charges back on my husband. This is brutal. Okay. And no one will help. Well, but you do have the second attorney. And he's trying to, but where basically what he told us is where he works, where he's a court-appointed attorney, and he works for the state, there's nothing he can do to help us other than what he's already done. And he's, he's filing for a mistrial and a, a retrial or a new trial, but no, it, if it's still in front of Cindy Morris, which has to approve that, then it's not going to go anywhere and it's still not going to be fair and just. It sounds like you need a civil rights attorney. And no one will help us. Then no one will go up against Whitfield County. They okay. said that's not our department. We can't help you. We can't help you. I've made over 500 phone calls in three days. Oh, Lord. I'm just trying to think how I could help. I could put your story all over the place. I mean, please. You know, and, yeah, not a problem. You had said something about you have a Facebook now? Yeah, I started a Facebook page with it. Okay. And basically, this is what I started for Facebook. And I'm going to go, you know, and it's not just for my husband and myself, it's for anybody that I think I found my calling. <laughs> I mean, even Andrew Powell, one of the state's attorneys there, like... Why does that name sound familiar to me? It, it's a state's attorney for juvenile, for defects. It, our story goes back even further than that, how defects lied and took our children. Oh, Lord. And I have paperwork to back everything I'm saying, black and white documentable or in video, to back everything I've stated. It's not just me saying something, and there's evidence to back everything I've stated. Right. Okay. Um, well, boy, this is really out of my element. I'm not sure how, what I can do. I mean, I can post the video. That's not a problem. You know, then a bunch of people will see it, you know. And feel free to give I'll me I'll tell you number. what. Okay. Well, if you, if you, uh, if it's, you don't mind doing that, I got your number. It's called Fighting for Justice Against Whitfield County Government Officials. Oh, that's the page. Yeah, yeah. I started a web page, not okay. a Facebook page just to fight back against Whitfield County. So people can share their stories and I can share mine. And maybe we can come up with some justice for people. That's it should been be nice for wrong. a change. You know. Yeah, I'm tired of gropping about it. I'm tired of just sitting here and not being able to do nothing about it. So I'm going to take a stand and do something. We got to. If we want it to change, we got to do something. The insanity has to stop. Um, the corruption yeah, has that's, to stop. Yeah, that's that's definitely. You know, I I agree. I I won't say that I've 100 percent agreed with anything that they've done here in Whitfield or Murray County. That's you know, I don't want to get myself in a can of worms by speaking out just on how I feel about things, well, but I mean, how I feel about things and what I can with, prove. Or with whatever. me speaking out too, I need people to watch more than ever because the, it's going to be retaliation. They're going to retaliate in some form or another and i need people to know and to watch that way if it's out there maybe the police won't retaliate as bad if they know that they're being watched in court. addition to the fact that it's already being that it's been out there and you know what i mean it's it's 
Yeah, it's I go your back th- to Channel I, Three News because you? yes, they, they my mother sent me a video to where they right after the trial that night that they blasted it on the news, News Channel Three, that my husband went into a homeless camp and attempted mur- tried to attempt attemptly murder a woman. And so I contacted Channel Three News and asked them if they wanted the real story. Over a year ago is when this took place. Yes. Allegedly. Took place. And my husband's been in Whitfield County with no bond for a year. Yeah. They denied him bond, won't give him a bond. Like. And that was for the attempted murder charge? Is for that... all of it. Wow. Oh, okay. There's seven, there's seven total charges. From the same incident? From the same incident. <laughs> How can that be? I mean, man, that's a boatload of charges. Okay, they, they went, even went as far as dropping the charge of a commission of a knife or a firearm in the commission of a felony. Or possession of knife or firearm in a commission of a felony. Okay, if there was no knife and he wasn't there, how the hell did he do it? But can anybody corroborate the fact that he wasn't there? Yes, there's seven witnesses. And on body cam from the night the incident happened when 911 was called. So... On- The first lawyer didn't call any of these witnesses to say that he wasn't there? I mean, they, they should have watched the body cam in the first place. The police, the detectives, before they actually, you know, so went they, and made an arrest warrant. They came to the scene, and this female told the police that this guy is the one that tried to kill me or something, and then... That would be me. I'm the victim, the alleged victim... But that's my husband, and you know, as the alleged victim, you know who who did or didn't. I mean, it, especially when there's seven other people sitting there saying he left way early this morning, packed his stuff, and left. No one's seen him there all day at all, even after the incident for days. Well, this is quite a story. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts here. I'd have to, I'll have to rewatch this so I can. You know, that's and the nice thing about having a video they can rewatch. I can get any and all the paperwork evidence that's needed from my husband's attorney, Steve Levins. Have you tried contact? Well, I'm I've, sure I've you have. Yeah. The US, I've contacted the United States attorneys, the attorney general. I've contacted the U.S. legislator. I have contacted the, the judicial... Uh, Oversight. The chief judicial, the 14th district judicial circuit judge. Okay. Um, I've contacted uh, the United States uh, Embassy of Disbarment and Dispensing. Holy crap, you've done your homework. Um, you need, you need to get, he, he needs a new trial. And. They, mm-hmm. he needs a verdict over time. What's their. You say their body cam is not showing. No. What? That he was there? No, not just the body cam, but the witnesses stated to the police, and it's on their body cams because you know that. Oh, okay. So the statement was made in the presence of their body cams. Yes. From all seven people. Yes. Okay. That he wasn't even there during the case, uh, and you know for a fact, you know that it yeah, didn't he happen. Yeah, right. And so. Me as the alleged victim sitting here saying it was not my husband, I did it to myself, hmm. should stand for something. And then you got the body cam footage of the witnesses there from the, you know, the police's body cam footage from that night stating, no, he wasn't here. We hadn't seen or heard from him all day long. He packed his stuff and left. How did they get notified in the first place? Because, like, I went running with my throat cut and my aunt called my mother and my mother called the police I never called the police the police was never rendered okay I never even went to the hospital I refused EMS services okay yeah as a grown woman you know that's your right obviously oh boy Heather I don't know what to do um I can certainly get the video out that's not a problem but you know, I'm sure you're going to want to. If people see it, maybe the right attorney will try you to. You never know. Out. I've got, I've had some strange. I mean, that's. You know, weird things happen for a reason. Trust me. It's, you know, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. 
you know, maybe, maybe somebody will reach out and or say, maybe hey, the exposure know. to them will make them drop charges or, you know, do the right thing. Uh, it's possible. I, uh, I would guess. Because it puts pressure on them to do the right thing because they know they're going to become at heart. It's, you know, an election year and people are going to be looking and watching that. And if the government officials want votes and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of weight carried on that. You know what I mean? People, it's pretty, they, you know, they do all the right things when it comes time, you know, for election. And they want to, you know, you know, oh boy, this is crazy. That's pretty hot and heavy. I'm still trying to interpret all this. We might Imagine have to... Imagine trying to live with this every day. Oh, I... No. Knowing I, that I don't you know. could possibly be the one that sends your husband away for 70 to 75 years for you being high and not knowing, not in the right state of mind. And okay, well, that right there, the fact about being high should be enough to be like... You would think. Out of improper frame of mind you know etc you would think you know boy you're gonna need boy you need a civil rights you got to get a, a new you got to get some type of new attorney but that's, then that's, like you said you nobody will take it nobody will take the case I, I, trust me i've tried what? i've reached out to the atlanta bar association i've reached out to uh victims advocacy and civil rights nobody will help Okay. So that's why I reached out to you, hoping that okay, you well, could let's, possibly help let, share or something. Yeah, let's try this. If you want, um, if you want to ask, you know, the YouTube community, you know, because this camera is working here. Um, if you want to share your phone number, now you're probably going to get a lot of totally weird calls. I'm going to give you forewarning on that. Or would you rather have? somebody who's serious about this contact me and then i can give him your that phone sounds number fine too. because telling i'm telling you i get thousands of views and there's going to be some crackpots that are going to call you and just tell you that you're worthless i believe me it's just it's safer not to do that with the phone number oh i understand that too yeah and, you know there's no denying you know that i'm an addict once an addict always an addict okay. there's a difference in being in recovery well or an active addiction it's you know it's it's a real situation in our country and do you I, have an email address you want to share that because somebody might be able to contact you directly uh, that way sure um or they can look up the facebook page i just created okay you might want to go ahead and tell them again the facebook page and, and maybe share your email and uh because not everybody's got facebook but everybody's got fa uh, email this you know what i mean true. yeah just trying to play the numbers game here a little bit let's see this is the facebook fighting for justice against whitfield county government officials and my email is heather.holgan spelled h-u-l-g-a-n 43 at gmail.com heather.holgan h-u-l-g-a-n yeah 43 43 at gmail.com at gmail.com Okay, fair enough. Like, knowing that, you know, because I was high, my husband could go away for life. Our children, you know, once we do get them back, they, they miss out on their father. The, and, oh, yeah, well, yeah. This whole of them forcing you to testify is, is blowing my mind. Yeah, and we're legally married and have been for years. Yeah. Mm. Me and my husband's been together in some sort of relationship 17 years. Wow. Damn, that's a while. Yeah. I'm still, you know, sitting here, even in our video visitations, like, I, you know, I say it's, excuse my language, but some bullshit yeah. that my husband's even in there that he didn't do nothing. Like. Oh, uh, yeah, there has to be. Now, you say... You, that the new attorney filed for discovery of all the evidence. Mm -hmm. A motion of discovery. Okay. When did he do this? Uh, he did this before the trial, like months before the trial. And the new wait, the new attorney? Yeah. And the DA never released it. And I had forgot about it. You know, there's a lot that goes on in a year that you can't remember. Yeah, absolutely. I can't remember what went on last week. 
you know, no, I, I, I get your point. You got, you're, you're out here fighting for your own survival. Yeah, I live in the streets, in yeah. the woods, and, and uh, I, I've it's... been trying to get a job, and it's hard because, like, they see you're homeless or, you know, you ride a bicycle. They, get, they, they you, don't want to hire you. You automatically get labeled, you know, and it's, it's difficult. And most people don't have ID and that type of stuff. Do you have ID and everything? I, I do, and I actually went for a job interview the other day, and, like, I'm still waiting to hear back from that. Like, I took time. I had to leave my husband's trial to go to a job interview. Okay. Is how much I'm trying, you know, to leave your your significant other, your spouse, when they need you the most to go try to help yourself. Yeah, I mean, because if you're not, you know, taking care of yourself, you can't do anything to help him. Right. You know, that's. But it's hard to sleep at night. It's. Oh, hard. I'm sure. Like, I. I cry all the time here lately because it's not fair. It, it really isn't fair. It's not fair. All right, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna have to try to put my thoughts together and, and you know, being that I have your phone number now and you have mine and you'll easily see it pop up, you know, the, the, the last four digits are pretty easy to remember. And uh, with that being said, I'm gonna try to piece together some ideas or some concerns. At the very least, people much smarter than me will see this and they'll have at least some sound advice you know that's going to be a good start you know hey my cousin works as a district attorney over here or there or something you know what i mean I'm, we're going to get something like that you know at some time and uh you know if they go to my email and they send me an email um or they can email you directly you know at the email address you just told them but I'm gonna, I'll see what I can try to find out. And if you want, this can be the, our first video here. And then if you wanted to, we could try to maybe sit down somewhere oh, and have a real formal. Here's another thing. The DA, like well, I told him I didn't want to talk to him from the get go, you know, I ain't got nothing to say to you. You don't want to believe me, I have nothing left you, to say. You have no obligation to. Right, so I have changed my phone number three or four times because they keep calling and harassing me. They will stalk down my phone number, hunt it down, and call me. Do they know your carrier? And, and my phone, I even put it in a friend's name and they still got my number. So check this out. When, during my husband's trial, the DA said, Miss Vaughn, is it fair to say that you don't like me? I was like, you damn straight I don't like <laughs> you. I said, in Honestly, fact, I think it's bullshit that <laughs> you're sitting here stalking and harassing me and breaking the law. He's like, I'm sorry, that's an omission of guilt. Okay. And like I told him, I'm sorry it doesn't fix the fact that you stalked and harassed me. It doesn't fix the fact that you broke the law. What, are you, are you going to be held accountable for breaking the law or are you above the law? Cindy Moore said nothing. Nobody else said nothing. Hmm. And that was when, that was testimony? That was during testimony with me on the stand. Did you get the transcripts? Uh, they, I'm sure that um, they're readily available through my husband's attorney. That's public interest. You can get that free. Anybody can. I can go get them. Uh, they tell me they're going to charge me. Yeah, they, they do. They charge it for transcripts. Because, like, I, I don't have the money yeah. to pay for those. So. Um, I don't know how much, but I know it's, like, per page. How long... So you were there at the trial. Yes. How long did the trial last? Oh, not to mention the fact that Cindy... Four days. Oh, wow. Cindy Morris, you know, victims have the right, or alleged victim, have the right to sit in the courtroom. Cindy Morris tried to tell me I could not go in the courtroom because they subpoenaed me to court as a witness after me telling them I would not testify against my husband, period, point blank. There was actually, before all this started, my husband's attorney filed paperwork a week before the trial to have a hearing to get rid of stuff, other stuff. And to where, hmm. you know, hearsay could not be used and stuff like that. Yeah, well, that's pretty much common knowledge about hearsay, you know. I mean, at this point, you would think that <laughs> they've not used a whole lot of the law. In fact, you would, they've went, you would think. They've overstepped their use of power. Um, and authority. Yeah. Now, this sounds like a bad case all the way around. And, you know. You know I mean, it, you know, from what you're telling me. Sydney, you know. I went to sit down and, you know, because I sat down behind, behind my husband. And she told me that I had to get out of the courtroom. And the victim advocate came out there because she had just told me I had the right sitting there. So I went in sitting there. And she and Cindy Morris told me I had to get out of the courtroom. 
And then so I went to her. She went and talked to Cindy Morris. Cindy Morris said that I could sit in the courtroom, but I would have to sit on the DA side with the, the advocate, and I couldn't sit behind my husband and support him. <laughs> or I had to stay out of the courtroom. So I stayed out of the courtroom for most of it. Wow. This is this is crazy, Heather. There's been so many rights and things done wrong. Okay, well let's hope that someone sees this that has, you know, some legal standing or you know, you know, a full understanding of some constitutional violations, and they might be able to come up with case numbers I mean, and all this other stuff. It's a lawsuit and a half. Like, it really yeah. is. It, on top of, you know, just trying to get my husband free. Like, if any lawyer is willing to help and, and they want to sue, they can keep all the money. Just get my husband home. Yeah, there's some things more important than money. You know. Keep it all. Just get my husband home. Yeah. You know what? Oh, boy. Too bad. Okay. Maybe somebody can give us some guidance on how to... Because there will be a hungry attorney, maybe in Atlanta that would be perhaps willing to take a case like this and you know if, if it's a lawsuit towards uh, oh, civil to mention, rights violations the police when they did arrest my husband my husband voluntarily surrendered it's on body cam too where he was already on his knees hands above his head like this mm -hmm. and saying please don't tase me I have seizures they tased him anyway to where my husband spent three days in ICU fighting for his life and he was in the submissive permission on his knees with his hands raised, and all he had to do was yes, and the have the, one of the cops just come up and cuff him, mm -hmm. and that would have been the end yep. of the story. Yep. So my husband left the hospital with staples in the top of his skull and being tased. Where did, where did the wound on his skull come? The hospital the hospital records are very contradictive. It says my husband was uh, unconscious, and yet my husband was talking to them and told them things. <laughs> This has got all kinds of issues. All kinds. Um, all right, well, I think the best thing we can do is probably try to get some professional advice from somebody that... You know, or if, that, that will, if they have a law degree and yeah. they're willing to help, like... Well, yeah, please. I mean, that's including that, but at least try to get you on the right track on, hey, there's this organization, such and such, you know... They don't advertise, people just know about it. You know what I mean? Something like that can can definitely happen. You know, I'd hate to try to, That's like, you know. I rode all the way here to meet you from across town just, if it, and if it's in a storm. No one yeah, it, it to, is. Yeah, we're going to no get pounded. No one I'm fixing to ride home in the hail just to be able to get my story out there. Now that speaks volumes in itself, the fact that, you know, mm -hmm. I rode my bike here just, and no one is going to storm and I'm going to get called out in a terrible storm just yeah. to, Okay, well, let me get this up, get this video going, and uh, you got your phone all charged up and stuff? You got a spot to charge? Yeah, I'm actually going to head to my friend's house. Okay, so you're not, you're not st sleeping outside right now? Oh, well, no, I'm going to go to his house to ride out the storm. Okay, yeah, there you go. Good well, idea. Well, it's, it's going to be all night. It's supposed to happen all night. Like, if it gets real bad, he'll let me stay in that there and sleep on his couch or in his chair, but... Okay. Good for you then. He's good people. All right. But for the most part, no. I try not to intrude on people because. Sure, sure. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. It's nice to have something and not over. Overstay, overstay your welcome. Your welcome yeah. Yeah, we're on the same page there. I totally get it, man. All right. Well, give me. There I you go. I appreciate your time, man. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thank you. I was surprised. Uh, it was just weird because it was the day after I seen William and I asked about you. You yeah, know. Yeah, you told me you had in. The very next That's day. That's when yeah. I, it clicked again. <clears throat> Heather, why don't you try talking to him? Well, if I wouldn't have seen him, I wouldn't have mentioned your name and you wouldn't have thought about it. So, do you, you see what I'm saying? There's um, a mysterious chain of events taking place here right now. Like, sometimes, like, I kind of lost my way with God. My husband's still standing firm on his beliefs in God. And I think maybe God just took me distraction to be a voice to stand up for all the chaos. And you never know. 
You never know. We'll find out. Well, let's see if we can at least get some people to join your 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 uh, Facebook page, and uh, you know, kick some ideas around, and you know, you can respond to them on the Facebook and whatnot. Yeah, we need to get something going, not just for me and my husband, but for all the people that's been done, you know, unjustly by Whitfield County. Right. The whole Conestoga Judicial Circuit, really. Uh, uh, yeah. District 14. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. District 14. Okay. It's the Conestoga Judicial Circuit. Yeah. I did my work well. All right, Heather. You be safe, man. Stay out of the stay out of the weather. It's coming. You can see it. So, all right. Take care, girl. That is just a horrible set of circumstances. And uh, I'm going to need to go out on a limb and say, hey, guys, I need people that are smarter than me. And they're, well, that's basically everybody, uh, to try to offer, solicit some, you know, informed advice, you know, to try to help her out. But, you know, it's, it's just hard. You know, it's, man, that's rough. You know, it's, I'll be thinking about this all night now. All right. All right, guys, we're going to we're gonna shut down and head out. That is just a horrible set of circumstances. And uh, I'm going to need to go out on a limb and say, hey, guys, I need people that are smarter than me. And they're, well, that's basically everybody. Uh, to try to offer, solicit some, you know, informed advice, you know, to try to help her out. But, you know, it's, it's just hard, you know, it's, man, that's rough, you know, it's, I'll be thinking about this all night now, alright, alright guys, we're gonna, we're gonna shut down and head out, and uh, get back to the house here.